Hi, I'm Jacqueline Stewart. Thanks for joining us on TCM, where we are celebrating Black History Month every Sunday night in February. Professor Samantha Shepard from Cornell University is my co-host for our first film tonight, Lilies of the Field. And we recorded our discussion just over a month before the star of the movie, the illustrious Sidney Poitier, died at the age of 94. Poitier spent much of his career making history, perhaps most notably when he won the Best Actor Academy Award for his performance in Lilies of the Field becoming the first black artist to win an Oscar in that category. Poitier's legacy cannot be overstated, not only in terms of his influence on the entire movie industry, but also his influence on American culture. He was one of the finest actors of any generation, the first mainstream black movie star, a successful director, and a passionate civil rights activist. Here's my conversation with Samantha Shepard, Associate Professor of Cinema and Media Studies at Cornell, introducing Lilies of the Field. Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline Stewart, coming to you from the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. Welcome to TCM as we kick off our month-long celebration of Black History Month. We'll be looking at films that are featured in the galleries of the Academy Museum, and I'm delighted to kick things off tonight with Professor Samantha Shepard. Samantha, you are Associate Professor of Cinema and Media Studies at Cornell University, and you're author of the book Sporting Blackness, race, embodiment, and critical muscle memory on screen. It's so wonderful to have you here. I'm so grateful to be here, Jacqueline. Thank you. So first, we're going to kick things off with the film we know and love, Lilies of the Field from yes. 1963. <laughs> and this is a film that really has special meaning for us here at the Academy Museum because Sidney Poitier is a figure that we honor in multiple places in this museum. Could you talk a bit about why this film had such popular and critical success? Absolutely. Lilies of the Field is a really important film for 1963, and largely because Sidney Poitier wins an Academy Award for Best Actor in a role, making himself the first African-American male to win the award, and also the second African-American since Hattie McDaniel to win an Oscar. And so one of the great things about Lilies of the Field is that we have a narrative that takes an image that Poitier had taken so long to cultivate as being both a dignified, respectable and really beloved star figure in Hollywood and also made him someone who was very platable to white and black audiences. And this film itself really is steeped in the 1960s, which is a period of so much civil rights turbulence and struggle, which is about a kind of interracial cooperative um, effort and reconciliation. And Sidney Poitier plays such a foundational role in the film as a figure who kind of brings people together. That's right. Yeah, in this film, he plays Homer Smith, a kind of itinerant worker who's traveling around the West. He comes up upon this group of Eastern European yes. nuns <laughs> in Arizona, and surprising even to himself, he ends up helping them to build a chapel. It's a really interesting film in terms of the way that it stages this interracial relationship. And of course, across Sidney Poitier's career, over and over again, he is modeling for audiences what black and white relationships could look like. What do you think about the way that this film represents that kind of interracial relationship narrative? Yeah, this film is really interesting in part because it's aware of race and also shows us how we can overcome racial differences because not only do we have the fact that he works with these German nuns from Austria and Hungary and Germany who are fleeing persecution as an itinerant worker, they recognize he's black, but they don't hold that against him in any kind of way. My skin is black. My skin is black. <laughs> no, her skin is white. My skin is black. White? And I think one of the reasons why is the film's sentiment is about interracial cooperation, also about um, thinking that there are no differences that cannot be overcome throughout, through, without working together. And so we have that in terms of not just black and white um, figures in the film, but also in terms of the Hispanic characters who also populate the narrative and the larger tome of faith. 
something to believe in, something bigger than oneself, something bigger than race, something bigger than religious or spiritual background, something bigger than sort of gender differences. And what this film is celebrating is that kind of cooperation. Yes. One of the things people also really love about this film is the song, Amen which so many people think is a traditional spiritual, but it was actually composed by Jester Hairston, who was an actor, right? Yes. Um, and also a major figure in spiritual music. So one of the things that I think about when I watch that moment, not only is that's a really interesting use of dubbing. Um, <laughs> because because say, Jester Hairston is singing the song. He's singing yes. the actual song, and it's got a great melody. It makes you want to sing along. And it's doing call and response, which is a part of a gospel tradition. Um, and it brings the nun, the Catholic nun, within this sort of Black Baptist Southern tradition of call and response. But it also then reminds us of like future iterations of how music Music has been used in these kind of interracial narratives with 30 years later, we have 1993, Sister Act and Whoopi Goldberg using music, right? Using sound to create a kind of interracial narrative of effort and cooperation, re reconciliation and support. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the film. And then after the film, Samantha and I have a special treat that we'll share with you from the galleries. From 1963, here is Lilies of the Field. Before we show the discussion I had with Cornell professor Samantha Shepard about Lilies of the Field, I'd like to add some additional context about Sidney Poitier. Poitier died on January 6th, nearly a month after Professor Shepard and I recorded the conversation you're about to see. After winning the Best Actor Oscar for Lilies of the Field, Poitier continued to blaze a trail in Hollywood. He was voted top box office draw of 1968, based on the receipts of his three 1967 films. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? to Sir With Love, and In the Heat of the Night, which went on to win Best Picture. He also directed quite a few films throughout the 1970s and 80s, including Buck and the Preacher, Uptown Saturday Night, and Stir Crazy. Poitier received an honorary award at the Oscar ceremony in 2002 for his extraordinary performances and unique presence on screen, and for representing the industry with dignity, style, and intelligence. Here's more of my conversation with Professor Shepard about Sidney Poitier. So here we are in the Oscars room at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, and we recognize 20 significant Oscar wins, including Sidney Poitier's statuette for Lilies of the Field. And it was a night that really seems as though Hollywood was tremendously excited and proud of itself for giving Sidney Poitier this Oscar. But his acting style in that film really, I think, in some ways complicates the idea that this is purely about just racial unity. Absolutely. I mean, the vigor of the applause is something we first want to highlight because everyone is so excited to applaud themselves for recognizing really the first black actor to win this award. And Sidney Poitier is running to the stage and he himself is so excited. And I think that's part of the vexing work of the film and of himself as a figure because He's a person and a persona that was such a big box office draw and a major superstar, but at the same time, he was also a quite sanitized figure that made white people feel good about themselves because he strove for a certain kind of equality, but one that didn't always challenge certain kinds of standards. I think Hollywood is really excited to recognize Sidney Poitier in this work, but also for his body of work, because he is a box office star. Yes, absolutely. And there are so many interesting moments in this film where, on the one hand, it seems as though there's a kind of innocuousness to his relationship with these nuns, and, you know, and even the amen scene, there's this scene of the joyful, racial equality in many ways. But then there are also moments in the film where racism is acknowledged and where Sidney Poitier does something that we see him do in many films, which is to respond in a vigorous way to racism. Yes, even though sometimes we frame Sidney Poitier as this ebony saint figure, and in a film that includes of nuns, of course, he seems like the most perfect ebony saint. But at the same time, he was a really sort of dignified, actor and person who deeply cared about civil rights issues. And so in his films, there are these really great moments where he imbues his character with a lot of dignity and particularly responding to moments of racial slights. And so we see that when he interacts with Mr. Ashton, who calls him boy. But listen, if you're their contractor, like you say, 
Tell her to take her business someplace else. My terms are strictly cash. You understand, boy? I understand. Hey, boy. It foreshadows the moment in the heat of the night where Sidney Poitier's character, Mr. Tibbs, slaps the white character back who slaps him. Yes. And so the return of boy for boy is really, really important within a larger narrative that Ashton, Mr. Ashton, ends up calling him Mr. at the end when he wants him to work for him. That's absolutely right. You know, in the speech that Sidney Poitier gives when he won this award, he talks about how this was a long journey. And the way he says that, it always struck me that he wasn't just talking about his own career, but the long journey of black people to get recognition in that industry and then even more broadly. And could you talk about some of the people that maybe Sidney Poitier had in mind when he was thinking about those forefathers and foremothers who started to try to pave the path that he just, you know, brought in substantially. Absolutely. I think that comment is trying to recognize this history of black actors and black agents who have been marginalized in Hollywood and outside of Hollywood. And so we've talked a lot about race movies and the role of black actors. So Paul Robeson, there is no recognition and Hollywood really did him wrong, but also his contemporaries like Harry Belafonte, right? So this sort of recognition that he's also come with a cohort of other actors. And even when we see that narrative of a long journey, we can look back, but we can look forward to all of the many actors who've come after Sidney Poitier. Of course, Denzel, Denzel, yes, yes. right? Yeah. But we also have, you know, Jamie Foxx, all the way through to Chadwick Boseman, mm -hmm. and this sort of history of black actors who have really added so much to the screen. Yes, and could take leading roles in films, which was a radical thing for Sidney Poitier and still is something that is incredibly important to recognize when it happens. And it seems that the Academy in Hollywood is recognizing that more and more. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Professor Samantha <laughs> Shepard. It's wonderful to be with you in the gallery. It's great. I'm hoping they'll let me take one of these home. Well, you have to earn it, <laughs> Samantha. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay with us for more of our celebration of Black History Month coming up next. Thank you.